Have you ever started lighting in EV and you had this really great idea in mind and it just kind of ended up looking like this and you want it to get to a place that's more photorealistic and more lifelike like this? Well, you're in luck because today we're going to talk about direct and indirect lighting in EV and how we can actually get that nice depth and that actual warm feeling and something that is more realistic. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so. I have a ton of other videos that I'd like to get out very soon, hopefully before the end of the year. Also, if you'd like this scene file to learn from, it will be on my Patreon. Link will be in the description. So let's go ahead and begin working on this scene. So the first thing um, that always happens with these interior renderings is uh, the glass, right? So we need to actually turn this into a glass shader just by coming to the transmission and allowing all those light rays to actually transmit through this object and come into the scene. And then we actually have to come down to our settings and change our blend mode from opaque to alpha. You could also try alpha hashed, but alpha blend mode is pretty simplistic and will work pretty well for our scene right here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just bump up the specular so it's very reflective, and then I'm also gonna cheat a little bit and add about uh, 0.5 metallic into here just so we can get some more reflections. And uh, I'm also gonna make this alpha 0.7, and this will come in very handy later. So right now I only have one source in my scene, and I got a ton of indirect illumination. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to just focus on the sun, and I'm gonna go into my world settings and just turn that off right now, just so we can see this nice bright sunlight coming through. And one of the things that always happens with Eevee uh, is that the shadow maps aren't quite lining up to the geometry, so uh, what I always like to do is come into the bias setting and just turn that down just so uh, we can, you know, start to get some of these more uh, geometric kind of angular geometry to have the, the shadow start as close as, uh, as it possibly can. Now, sometimes uh, do this with caution. If you have some organic models, uh, you may see what they like to call in the industry like shadow acne. Um, but just a word of caution, everything looks pretty good for this scene. I do have it pretty strong just because I want this to be a bright sunlight. And then I'm also going to come down here and tick on contact shadows. Um, and contact shadows is actually a really cool technique in computer graphics. Uh, be warned uh, that this can cause some uh, unwanted happenings. So uh, by just increasing this bias, you can see um, sometimes this is what it would look like. So, but we need to actually rope that in a little bit. And our distance is also something that we need to be uh, aware of. So I had this somewhere around uh, 10 and then our thickness is another setting. So you can see how this contact shadows actually works. It's uh, trying to uh, dictate like how the other side of this object, how thick it may be. And then it actually uh, projects some shadows downward from the angle of our light. So maybe somewhere around uh, two will work just great for us. And uh, now you can see that that cub actually feels like it's on the ground and the shadow is actually uh, coming through here uh, pretty nicely. And we can adjust these settings later once we go into our renderable camera. So another way to help this out is um, actually, if you see my scene, let's go ahead and switch to flat shaded mode. Uh, this is just one polygonal object. It's just like a flat plane essentially. Um, so what I've done is just added something in here called uh, shadow casters. Uh, and this actually has some thickness. So if we jump back into our uh, rendered view, you can see that that takes a care of a ton of those problems. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this fourth wall um, just so we can start talking about uh, indirect illumination. Uh, so in this scene, the primary source is the sun and that actual sunlight comes into the scene and it hits the floor and it's going to bounce up, hit the ceiling and bounce around. It's going to do this many, many times. Uh, now this is very computationally heavy. Cycles is a path tracer, so it does that very, very easy, and it's kind of in its nature to do so. But now we're using rasterization techniques similar to a video game. So the only way that we can actually get some indirect lighting would be uh, to add something like an irradiance volume. So let's go ahead and turn on this irradiance volume. And I also have a reflection cube map. Um, so both of these volumes are gonna encompass our scene. Um, it's gonna fit nicely. Uh, you can see from the, uh, from the top and from the sides, you can see that it's just perfectly fit for this scene. Now you can have more than one irradiance volume if you would like, but right now I just have one large irradiance volume that goes into the scene, all set to a resolution of four. And this is by default. Increasing these numbers though can drastically increase your bake time. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna come into the background 
And I'm actually going to turn this on. This is in an HDR that I got from HDRI Haven. Um, and now you can see when I go outside, it's nice and bright. But when I come back inside uh, looking through the glass, it's actually pretty dark. Um, so I'm going to actually do a little bit of a trick here. And every time we have a transmission ray, I want to actually swap for this shader here that is 12 times brighter. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into our background. And uh, straight away, it's going to brighten that up. And it's going to remain the same intensity outside. Let's look at our reflections right here in this lamp. Uh, this is basically just the HDRI. Uh, why aren't we seeing anything else in the scene? Well, this is where that cube map comes in handy. So let's go into our render settings. And we'll actually go down to indirect lighting and let's go ahead and just bake the cube map only. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, went to our filter and put on viewports and uh, renders and disabled the irradiance volume just to show you how, mu how much of a difference this cube reflection map uh, makes. Now, this is something that is um, indicative in video games. Uh, it's something where all static objects are going to appear in the reflections. So... Uh, yeah, you can see that this works out really, really nicely for us. And I have this resolution uh, set pretty high. So let's try this at uh, 64 pixels and see what this looks like. Let's go ahead and hit Bake Cube Map. And this is our result. Uh, it actually looks pretty good for just 64, but let's just go down to 4096 uh, and go ahead and hit Bake. And wow, that made a big difference. Just with uh, making 4096, we have way more detail and way more of that indirect uh, reflection affecting our environment. So that covers basically our indirect reflections. Uh, remember how dark it was when we just had the sunlight? And then remember when we actually added the environment, how bright it got? This is kind of taming that a little bit more with adding the reflection. But what if we could bake our indirect illumination into tiny little probes. Well, they actually have something that we can do and use that. So these uh, tiny little dots will capture all of the indirect uh, illumination in this spherical harmonic. Uh, so it's actually like little tiny spheres that are actually gonna sample the light around it. So let's go ahead and bake the indirect lighting and this will take just a moment. And here's our result from the bake and wow, does that just, kind of bring all that lighting um, together in this room. It feels very dynamic. It feels like there's lighting bouncing everywhere and it's exactly what we want. Um, notice with this little probe that I have in here, which is just a sphere, uh, as I move this um, in and out of kind of the direct and indirect illumination, uh, you can start to see uh, just, how, just how awesome this is looking. Um, and if I let my mouse go, we can start to compute some of those softer shadows. So everything is looking really, really nice. So super happy with that. So one of the final two tweaks that I wanna do is um, add a little bit more bounced uh, information into the scene. So I have one light that is outside uh, that is super big, and that's just casting this overall kind of bluish tint. And then I have a light inside that's up here. It's huge, it's almost as big as the room. Uh, and this is just giving an overall soft kind of down um, fill, if you will. So this is kind of simulating the light that would hit the floor, hit the ceiling, and then cast back down onto the object. So uh, it's pretty warm. I'll show you both of these settings. Uh, it's around 60 watts or so. Uh, it's a pretty large size. Uh, I do have shadows turned on just to kind of ground everything from above. Uh, same here, I do have shadows on. Um, I have this a little bit higher intensity value just to kind of mix some more color in here and get some more kind of blue um, indirect illumination. So let's go ahead one more time. Let's go and bake um, the indirect lighting. Uh, notice the cube map at 4096 uh, is taking pretty long. So I'm going to go ahead and just bump this down to 1024. And that baked super fast. And uh, you can see now that we kind of get this more natural indirect illumination in here. Uh, and it's looking pretty good. Let's add uh, a few more post effects in here to kind of make this uh, look really nice and bring it together. Uh, first of all, ambient occlusion, uh, you can see when we add this uh, underneath the credenza especially, uh, it just starts to ground that object a little bit more. And I'm going to put it around uh, 0.8, uh, maybe maybe a little bit less than that, uh, maybe somewhere around 0.6. Uh, I think that works really well. Uh, I do have the distance uh, turned up a bit just so I could kind of get that uh, area under the credenza kind of... Um, in play here and, and kind of get that kind of dark shadow. Uh, I am going to turn on bloom a little bit and then I'm going to come into the intensity and uh, I'm going to 
turn that down uh, pretty significantly. But this just kind of gives that nice kind of uh, overall bright light kind of onto the lens. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Well, of course, uh, screen space reflections are always going to work out really well for us just because uh, everything in the camera frustrum or everything that is actually renderable in terms of pixels uh, is what is captured in screen space reflections. Uh, so one thing that actually happens is that sometimes the sides, uh, there's just no information beyond the bounds of our rendered image. So uh, you can come in here and adjust some of this ed edge fading a little bit if you need to in your scenes. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it um, pretty low for us. And uh, I do have half trace on and also refraction is turned on too. Um, I don't have any kind of glass sculptures or any kind of interesting organic glass shapes. Uh, but you do want to have refraction ticked on just to kind of give you an overall nice physical based kind of look. Uh, also, uh, my shadows, uh, the cube size here, uh, we can kind of pump these up uh, to something really high uh, and get these, uh, this, especially this shadow here on our character looking really nice and sharp and uh, take out all those jaggies. You can switch on high bit depth if you'd like uh, to get a little bit more quality into the shadows, but uh, in this scene, it's really hard to see that. And of course, the final thing you can do is come in here to your look uh, and change this however you guys like. Um, you, can, you know, you can set it to very high contrast uh, or medium high contrast. Just depends on the uh, the mood and the tone you're kind of going for. I think high contrast works pretty well for the scene. And the last thing I'll do is just uh, turn on depth of field and uh, set my focus object to my character. Okay, so that will do it for this short video. Thank you guys so much for following along. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to answer them, or I'd love to see what you guys are working on. Until next time, take care.